and welcome to Dining Debunked Episode 1. So you guys seem to really enjoy my healthy choices at fast food restaurants vlog that I did a while ago and I've gotten a lot of requests to do more uh, stuff similar to that. So I thought we would sort of make it into a series where I take you with me uh, out to eat at chain restaurants um, and we can go through the menu together, go through the nutrition together. And if you do enjoy this type of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment below so that I know that you want me to make more. So without further ado, first up is Panera Bread. One of the problems with Panera is there are not a ton of choices that are actually healthy choices, which is weird because it seems like a healthy choice. Like it has a nice design and comfortable ambiance and feels like this sort of upscale cafe. The good thing is that they do make their nutrition accessible. So you can find this PDF with their nutrition online uh, at their website and most chain restaurants do that now, which is great. The biggest problem with making this accessible is that most people don't know how to read it properly or they don't know what they're looking for or they are only looking for the things that they've heard about before so they know oh I'm supposed to have something lower in calories or I hear carbs are bad or fat is bad or these generalizations that aren't necessarily true so when they see oh this is X amount of calories or fat or carbs they don't really know what it means and having the nutrition there just doesn't do anything for those people so it is up to you to educate yourself to learn how to read those labels properly so that you can make healthy choices without picking the thing that's you know the lowest in calories or fat because that's not always the best as we are going to see today. I personally try to think of food as fuel. So when I decide to eat something, I try to think, is this option going to fuel my body? Uh, is it going to give me you know, nutrients that are gonna make me feel good and feel full? Now, that doesn't mean that every single meal that I consume at all times is fuel. Sometimes I indulge, sometimes I wanna get the less healthy thing. The purpose of this is not for me to tell you to not get the less healthy thing. Uh, if you wanna do that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I am just trying to help show you if you want to go to Panera and you're trying to stay on track and keep making healthy choices, what do you want to look for and what do you want to avoid? So yeah, I just want to put that little disclaimer out there. Um, for this episode and any of these dining debunked episodes that we may do in the future, I am not telling you to eat or not eat at these places. I am not telling you that any of the menu items are good or bad or that they must be avoided um, or that you must eat them. I want you to pick whatever works for your lifestyle. I am simply reading the nutrition to you and going through it with you. I'm just making the information more accessible. I am not adding any other opinion opinions to that. Finally, let's get to the nutrition. I am going to skip the bakery items and the breads because we can assume that pastries are going to be higher in calories and fat and obviously not the healthiest choice. And in this video, I really want to focus on the things that people think are healthier. I do want to stop briefly at the fruit smoothies. So they really market these to seem like a healthy choice. But when you look at the nutrition, every single one of them makes a health claim. And I've told you guys before, health claims are a red flag. So it says fat free, you know, green passion power smoothie, low fat, low fat, super fruit power, low fat, low fat. All these claims, they really want you to think that it's healthy. Let's just look at the low fat wild berry smoothie. Uh, the one smoothie is 340 calories. It does only have one and a half grams of fat, so it is low fat. It's not a false claim, but why do they need to claim that? Well, there's 75 grams of carbs in this smoothie. 68 of which are sugar. Now, a lot of people might think, oh, well, that's okay because it's natural, it's from fruit, but that's not exactly true. When you look at the ingredients, which are not listed in this PDF, but you can find them on the Panera website, what's sweetening the smoothies are concentrate. So I'm not gonna go into what concentrate is. I could talk about it all day long, um, but pretty much it's very, very concentrated fruit juice, so there's a lot more sugar than you really need in it. If you guys are interested in me doing a video on concentrate and fruit juices and smoothies and stuff like that, um, leave a comment below so that I know, but I'm not gonna get into it today. So let's start with paninis and sandwiches. The best option macronutrient-wise is the smoked turkey breast sandwich on country. The whole sandwich is only 430 calories, three and a half grams of fat, 67 grams of carbs. So still a little high in the carbs, but it's a pretty decent sized sandwich. The macros don't seem terrible, but this is actually not the sandwich that I would recommend people choose. 
Now why is that? Reason number one, it is on country bread, which is just white bread. So we obviously want to go for whole wheat options when we can because we want to go with whole grains and get more fiber. I have done an entire video on how to choose bread, so if you are interested, I will link that in the description box below. I'm not going to talk about it today. Reason number two, uh, the micros. So the micronutrients. Most people maybe not you, a lot of people um, might look at this and see, oh, if I get half of this sandwich, it's only 220 calories. Well, that's pretty low, that's pretty good. Uh, and it's only two grams of fat. But what they don't see is the sodium. So 890 milligrams and half of the sandwich. That means the entire sandwich is 1790, 1790 milligrams of sodium in that sandwich. Now, this is where it becomes an issue where if people don't know how to read this properly, that number doesn't mean anything to them. If they don't know how much sodium they're supposed to be consuming, then they don't know if that's a high number or not. To give you some perspective, the American Heart Association recommends that we consume uh, 1500 milligrams or less of sodium per day. That's debatable, I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but it is recommended for a reason. So what to take from that is 1790 in the entire sandwich is more sodium than is recommended for an entire day. So my point is just because it is a lower calorie option doesn't mean it is the healthiest option. Now healthy is a relative term, so I really hate using it in this context because to some people, you know, the lowest calorie is gonna be the healthiest and to some the lowest sodium is gonna be the healthiest and some the highest protein is gonna be the healthiest. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but just understand that 220 calories doesn't make this healthy. Let's move on from the sandwiches. All right, salad. If your salad still has 30 to 40 grams of carbs in it, is it really any better than eating the sandwich? Now, a lot of people would debate me on this. I'm not telling you to go eat the sandwich instead of the salad. I'm saying take a closer look at what is in your salad. If you look at these salads listed here, not only are the carbs high, but the fat, you know, you've got 30 to 40 or more grams of fat in so many of these, and why is that? Probably the dressing. Let's take a look at one specifically, the Mediterranean chicken and quinoa salad. Sounds really healthy, right? 38 grams of fat, 580 calories in the whole salad. Okay, I can, you know, I can bite it, I guess. But if you look at the dressing that comes with that salad, which is the Greek herb vinaigrette, it is 210 calories and 23 grams of fat just in the dressing. So if you've got 38 grams of fat in the salad and 23 of those grams are from the dressing alone, that's a lot. Now you could of course get the dressing on the side so that you're in control of how much you're eating and that will you know, lower the fat, I'm sure, a bit. But there might be other ingredients that you're not thinking about like nuts or avocado or seeds. And even though those are healthy choices, we still have to be aware of the overall amount of fat we're consuming. So what's the perspective on that? The US Department of Health and Human Services recommends uh, 20 to 35% of your daily calories are from fat. Again, very debatable. My goal today is not to debate you uh, on nutrition, it is to simply provide you the facts. So if you are consuming 1,500 to 2,000 calories a day, um, which is pretty average, you know, maybe a little higher than that, uh, that would mean you are getting 30 to 40 grams of fat a day. So suddenly this healthy choice of a salad uh, becomes your entire amount of fat for the day, 38 grams, that's a lot. Now if you are concerned about how many uh, grams or milligrams of these macro or micronutrients that you should be specifically consuming, um, I do recommend that you talk to your doctor. I am simply referencing generalized recommendation amounts for educational purposes. I'm not giving specific advice for any person. On to the soups, another deceivingly unhealthy choice at Panera, many of these at least. Um, right off the bat, we know the bread bowl uh, is going to add a lot of calories and a lot of carbs to whatever soup you get. It looks like the bread bowl alone is almost 550 calories, 120 grams of carbs, and 900 milligrams of sodium. Just the bowl. So onto the soups. Here we go again with the health claims. Low fat chicken orzo soup. Uh, the bowl, it's only 180 calories, it's only five grams of fat. Um, but there are 1340, 1340 milligrams of sodium, or the low fat, all natural chicken noodle soup, uh, the bowl, 130 calories, one and a half grams of fat, really awesome macros, right? But 1440 milligrams of sodium, 
That is high. And same with the broth bowl, the lentil quinoa bowl with chicken. Sounds super healthy. Uh, 1,370 milligrams of sodium. So again, uh, lower in calories, not necessarily more nutritious. And shout out to my boy, vegetarian creamy tomato soup. You are really tasty, but there are 32 grams of fat and 33 grams of carbs in you. Why? Why in a soup? You know, it's vegetarian and it might be, there might be some tomato in it, but this is still not exactly the fuel I want for my body. A lot of people might go in and think, oh, I'll get the you pick two and I will get a salad and the mac and cheese because, you know, it's a smaller portion of the mac and cheese and I'm having the salad to balance it out. Um, and if you've thought this way before, don't worry, you're not alone. I used to do this myself and that is why, you know, I've, I've started learning how to read these on my own because it's easy to make that mistake. You know, a lot of people might even, even be moderately aware of what they're ordering. They know that that small cup of mac and cheese is 490 calories, 30 grams of fat. But what they don't think about is that the salad, even though it's only an extra 190 calories, they're like, you know, that only makes it 680 calories. That's not so bad for my lunch, 680 calories. But then what about the 47 grams of fat? Even if they're aware of that, are they aware that, you know, 570 milligrams of sodium plus 1,020 milligrams, so you're at 1,590 milligrams of sodium now from just this, you know, salad and mac and cheese. Then you add in that extra French baguette, which is just kind of defaulted. They just put it on your plate even if you don't ask for it. And you're adding an extra, you know, oh, 180 calories, 440 milligrams of sodium. So your entire meal now racks up a whopping 2,190 milligrams of sodium from just mac and cheese salad and a piece of bread. Again, if you've done this before, you're not alone. I'm right there with you. I'm just saying this is why it is important that now we together start to learn um, how to read these. It's not science, it's just reading, but it's knowing how to read them properly. So now we have come to the point in the video where we actually get to go in to eat some food. What shall I order? So I used to order the Power Bowls um, that Panera had, but I guess they discontinued those, so I can't order those anymore. They had like a Power Hummus Bowl, and it was pretty tasty and really good stats, but it's gone. So I had to make a new choice today. So a lot of you guys know I am not a huge salad person. Uh, when I go out to eat, I pretty much want to order all the other deliciousness and not eat a salad, right? Um, but one thing that I've come to find in the past few months because I've been eating out more is I sometimes like getting a salad when I'm out because uh, they're preparing it. They're, you know, having to do all the cutting and the prepping and I don't do that at home and I don't want to spend time doing it at home. So when I go out, I get like all these great fruits and vegetables and I don't have to do the work. So sometimes I like ordering a salad and at Panera, because you can do the you pick two, I can get a salad and something else. So that's what I did today. I got the strawberry poppy seed and chicken salad and it is the half size. Um, and the macros on that are pretty good. 170 calories, seven grams of fat, 150 milligrams of sodium, 16 grams of carbs, three of which are fiber and 15 grams of protein. So it's a decent choice. And I also got a sandwich with that. I got the tuna salad sandwich and it comes on honey wheat usually, but I asked um, if they had whole wheat and they did. So I got that instead. Half of it is 260 calories, eight grams of fat, 550 milligrams of sodium, 32 grams of carbs and 14 grams of protein. And instead of the French baguette or the bread on the side, I just went for the apple. The entire macros for this meal are 510 calories, which is pretty good. I mean, that's pretty solid lunch. It's 15 grams of fat, 52 grams of carbs, which is kind of high, but 
Uh, I know that a lot of those carbs are coming from natural sugars from my apple, from the fruit in my salad, and also it has 10 grams of fiber here, which is great. Um, I have 29 grams of protein and I have 700 milligrams of sodium. So what I like about this meal is I get my veggies in, I get to enjoy my veggies more because there's fruit on top of the veggies, and I still get to enjoy a sandwich and a decent amount of protein in the entire thing. I wish it could be gluten-free bread, but hey, you can't get everything. So my biggest kind of concern with this meal is the sodium, and it's not like out of control high, but it's definitely higher than if I made this entire meal at home on my own. As you will see, you'll find that sodium will be a recurring issue with this series, I'm sure. Anytime you go out to eat, they're just inherently going to add a lot more salt. Now, it's important to note that I didn't choose this meal because it's the healthiest macronutrient-wise. I chose it because it fits my lifestyle and my preferences. So the other thing is you don't wanna go and order something just because it's the healthiest if you don't wanna eat it, right? Like, I tried to get something that I actually want to eat. If I actually wanted to pick the healthiest thing on the menu, it probably would have been the classic salad with chicken, which I just probably wouldn't have enjoyed eating as much, just a bunch of vegetables and some chicken. So now I'm getting to enjoy myself a little bit more and not feel bad, and that is the point. At the end of the day, uh, Panera sort of makes me mad because they don't have a ton of choices. And I think that will be a problem with a lot of places, especially because of the sodium. But that doesn't mean that a healthy choice can't be made. It just means we have to you know, take the responsibility to do our own research and figure out what is available and what's actually on the label of the food that we're eating. If you have a healthy go-to at Panera, please comment below and let me know. And if you want me to do more of these, let me know. If you have any ideas of places you want me to go, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because that really does help give me great feedback, uh, letting me know what you guys like. And uh, just before going, I, I please, please, please ask you, I can't ask you enough, uh, be open-minded with this series. This isn't me telling you what to do or that you're doing anything you know, right or wrong. I'm just trying to bring awareness to what's actually out there and you know, I'm just re I'm really just reading you the label. If you're like, whatever, I love my mac and cheese at Panera, I'm gonna eat it every time, go for it. I'm not saying anything against that, I'm not judging it. I just want you to go and eat it and know what you're eating. So I hope you found this useful. I hope that you have a great weekend. Uh, I will see you on Monday. And if you're eating at Panera, remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.